you on SportsCenter and the Phoenix Suns on the verge of a trip to the NBA Finals. Tonight, Western Conference Finals, Game 5, they could clinch it. Devin Booker, the story of Game 1. 40-point triple-double, first triple-double of his career, allowing the Suns to overcome the absence of Chris Paul and beat the Clippers 120 to 114. And then in a crazy Game 2, Booker broke his nose. And Paul George missed two free throws in the final 10 seconds. Then Jay Crowder to DeAndre Ayton. The Valley Oop giving the Suns a last second win. Now Booker wearing a mask in Game 3, shot just 5 of 21, and Chris Paul came back but struggled also, matching Booker's 15 points. The Clippers rally from a 2-0 deficit for the third straight series and take the game. And then in Game 4, L.A. missed all 10 of its shots with a chance to take the lead in the fourth. The Suns hold on for the win to take a 3-1 series lead, heading back home tonight with a chance to clinch. Here's Dave McMiniman. Up 3-1 in the Western Conference Finals and having played a game every other day for the last week with two trips between Phoenix and Los Angeles mixed in during that time, the last thing the Suns needed on Sunday was a practice. But Suns coach Monty Williams brought his team together anyway. I just wanted the guys to come in and be around each other, Williams said. Williams added that the team discussed their Game 4 win of the Clippers as a group and also walked through some things that they can apply to Monday's Game 5 when the franchise can clinch its first finals berth since 1993. I thought it was good for us, Williams said, get our approach and our mindset ready for tomorrow. And now for a report on the Clippers, let's go to Om Young Masu. Thanks, Dave. The Clippers are the only team in NBA history to come back from down 2-0 twice in the same postseason. Now they have to overcome a 3-1 deficit in the Western Conference Finals, something Ty Lue says is very doable. Lue should know he coached the Cleveland Cavaliers to a 3-1 comeback against the Golden State Warriors in the 2016 NBA Finals. After the team arrived to Phoenix on Sunday, Lue said a 3-1 comeback starts by zeroing in on winning the first quarter of Game 5 and going quarter by quarter. Lue remembers LeBron James setting the tone for the Cavs early when he scored 12 of his 41 points in the first quarter. Without Kawhi Leonard, Paul George said it's going to be tough, but he knows he has to get off to a quick start after missing six of seven three-pointers in the first quarter of Game 4. Thanks, Tom. So good insight, really, into the mindset of both coaches going into this Game 5. And Kendrick Perk is, is back for more. So, Perk, the Clips have played their best basketball time and again in these playoffs when they're on the brink. But they have to go into the Valley tonight without Kawhi Leonard. They're facing an emotionally charged Suns team and that wild crowd. How could they pull off the improbable and extend this series? <laughs> they could pray. That's that's the starting point. They could pray, but listen, Hannah, it's it's not happening. All right, okay. Look, okay. Phoenix is closing this out tonight. Okay, I'm down here and it's hot as hell. Let me tell you that first thing first. <laughs> it is hot. You know, I'm already overweight. You know, I you know I put that sixty pound of retirement weight on. But there's no way that the Phoenix Suns is losing this game tonight. Chris Paul is not going to let the Suns lose this game tonight. We already know that he has a history, Hannah, of blowing a 3-1 lead. He knows this opportunity is in front of him. Devin Booker will not struggle tonight. This crowd is ready. This city is ready. It's going to be fired up in here. People are ready for the Suns to win. The Suns are going to close this out, period, point blank. Okay, first of all, you need to stay in air conditioning and you need to stay under those misty fans all right there in Phoenix. Mm -hmm. So that, that's like my little my little tip for you. But yep. meanwhile, let's talk about Chris Paul. Just the fantastic scene there, this incredible turnaround by the Suns. Paul's been close. He's never gotten there. Devin Booker, DeAndre Ayton, they're talking about how CP3 mentored them, how much they admired him. So how has mm -hmm. this team, this franchise, come together so quickly mm. to be a championship contender? You know what? It starts at the top. And we're talking about the GM and James Jones, a champion, grew up under the Miami Heat culture, went to Cleveland, won a ring. Play with Reggie Miller in the paces, okay? So he knows what it takes to develop and, and, and build the team. And then you move down to Monty Williams, a hell of a uh, coach. In my opinion, should have won coach of the year. He has a hell of a coaching staff. Mark Bryan is over there. 
had one of the best big man coaches in the game today. You have this leadership, and then you have a floor general, one of the best leaders of all time, a culture changer, and Chris Paul. And we heard DeAndre Ayton in his post game comments. He said it. The best thing happened for my career was CP3, and we're mm -hmm. watching that. You know why? Because he put that key in his back. And then you have a guy like a veteran like Jay Crowder, who just mm -hmm. went to, who was just in the finals last year, to also help push these young guys to get the best out of them and hold them accountable. This is how. This is why it has come together so quickly. See, it doesn't have to be a long, drawn-out process, uh, Philly fans. You know what? You can pull a team together quickly like they did. <laughs> With all the right moves. I, just, I thought you would enjoy that. I just had to make you laugh yeah. there. All right, Perk, listen, mm -hmm. stay cool, my friend. Uh, thanks for all the insight. It should be a great scene tonight in Phoenix. Thank you. All right, well, we'll see what happens with Kyler, but we have a big game going on tonight, guys. Kawhi Leonard officially out for Game 5 tonight. The Suns just one game away from getting to the finals for the first time since 1993. So, Perk, who you got winning tonight? Oh, it's over. Clippers, Clippers at, I mean, Suns at 5. Look, I know Ty Lue, he's great with his back against the wall. He's come back from being down 3-1. I, I got the Suns winning this, closing this out in great fashion. The crowd is going to be rowdy tonight. Role players are going to be ready. And Chris Paul do not want to go to a game six. He's mm -hmm. going to take this under control. Yeah, I think you're right. I'm with you on the Suns. The, the Clippers have had their chances to win and frankly have blown them. So I'm not sure that they're going to be able to muster up what they need to get back into a close game at the end. And uh, with Kawhi officially out, obviously we knew he probably wasn't going to play. With him officially out and them down three, it's hard, I think, for them to muster the, the energy, although Ty Lue has done it before, to come back from uh, down 3-1. Okay, and real quick, Perk, you think that hey, Paul Chuck. George is going to have a big game tonight? Uh, I wouldn't bet on it. You know, I wouldn't bet on it. I think they're going to be on All this right. heels. All right. Well, like we will see what happens, Charlie. guys. It's been so much fun. One hour. Look. We did it. But look, Dominique Good to see got the, Let's Dominique do it again tomorrow. All right, guys. Fade. See you later. <laughs> Can you tell us about that injured knee of his? The Clippers have been very tight-lipped about Kawhi Leonard. Now, listen, he has a sprained right knee. And normally, I, I ask one head coach, how long does it take for a player to come back from a sprained right knee? And he was like, at least two weeks, two to three weeks. Uh, so listen, it's going to be two weeks on Monday from when Kawhi Leonard hurt his knee in game four against Utah. I still would be very surprised if we see Kawhi Leonard in this Western Conference Finals. But if they get to the NBA Finals, I don't know. Who knows? But I think we know Kawhi Leonard with his body. He is working around the clock to get that knee right in case he can come back. All right, speaking of Kawhi, I want to run through some things that caught our attention in a segment we're calling. Did y'all see this? <laughs> and, and Jacoby, I know you've been itching for this. We saw Kawhi sitting in the suite in the Staples Center with his family during game three. You tweeted about this. What are your observations? When I see him sitting in the suite, it tells me that he's not coming back in this series. I mean, he should be on the bench. No, he's not a vocal leader. We know that about Kawhi Leonard. But two things. Number one, you need to be down there just to have them feel your presence. You're the leader of the team. Number two, when I go to work, I go to work to get away from my family. Like, dog, get away from your family. <laughs> I'm spending too much time with my kids. You got, the, you got two hours. Get away from them. Let someone else take care of the kids for those two hours. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> fair point, fair point, as I hear my daughter screaming in the background. But you cool <laughs> with, with Kawhi in the suite and then and not on the bench with his teammates here? I'm not. I'm not. And here's why, right? You have your best player on your team, and like Jacoby said, you're a leader, one of the guys, your franchise guys. You you need that energy on the bit on the bench. You want to know. Preach. Forget just being in the locker room. I remember when KG was hurt in 2008-2009 season. He Preach. he really couldn't stomach being out there on the court watching us play because he wanted to be out there. He would be in the locker room and Doc was and Doc had a meeting with KG and told KG no. We need you on the bench. Perk needs you on the bench. Big Baby needs you on the bench. Terrence Mann needs Kawhi on the bench. Reggie Jackson needs Kawhi on the bench. I'm not really, I wasn't really feeling them sitting up in the suite 
eating chicken wings from a uh, thigh stop. I'm not feeling that. At the end of the day, be part of your team, whether you know you're injured or not. Sit down there and be part of the camaraderie. I mean, oh, I heard he came down at half, but what do you know about the interactions he has been having with the team? Perk, I love you, my brother, my Asian brother. Remember, we made you an honorable Asian brother a few shows ago, okay? No. But listen, you're talking, you're talking about KG versus Kawhi Leonard. KG, Kawhi's a robot. There's no emotions from him. You know what? I actually took the binoculars and I was watching him in the suite, especially after big moments like Paul George hitting the shot from half court. There's no emotion from Kawhi. He's just sitting there with his kids. But Cassidy, it doesn't mean he's just sitting there lounging around in that suite. At halftime, he goes down. He's talked to the players. He's even gone to the coaches' room at halftime, talked to the coaches. He's texting them insights. I, I actually think it's almost like an NFL coordinator from that bird's eye view. I think Kawhi yeah. Leonard's getting a different view of what's going on, and he's able to help them with strategy. Yeah, yeah, but 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 um, but um, let me educate you on something. When you're on that bench in the <laughs> heat of the when you're on that bench in the heat of the moments. And you got a guy like Ter like Terrence Mann who may miss a shot, or you got even Paul George who may be in the shooting slump, and he comes in a timeout, and you have a guy like Kawhi, whether he's yelling or whispering it to him, and he comes and say, hey, keep going now, keep rocking out. That was a good shot. Take the next one. That goes a long way with your brothers on the floor. That's all I'm saying. All yeah, I'm I mean, saying he, is I agree with you 100% on that. I'm closing my blinds tonight because Ohm, Ohm Kawhi, might be Kawhi watching me from his binoculars. <laughs> oh, you got binoculars, dog? I'm closing my blinds tonight. Hey, Ohm might be watching. Level. You never hey, know. We don't mess around. We don't mess that's around. That's next level mess around. Okay, that's next level. Especially since in these co uh, po post-COVID days, you know, we they put us far up, far up. So we have to be able to see. Um, look, stepping up in Kawhi's place have been Paul George and Reggie Jackson. In post-game, Paul George was talking about how the two of them used to live together um, and how they talked about